Before I uh, open up the floor for questions, I just want to give a brief introduction to the uh, priest of the Paternity of St. Peter. Most of you are from the parish here, but we have many, many, many visitors, for which I, I thank you for making the journey to, uh, to come here. Uh, some of you may not be aware of the work of the Paternity of St. Peter. We are a society of apostolic life, well, which is a, a kind of halfway between a religious order like the Dominicans or the Franciscans and the diocesan clergy. So we're kind of in between. We do uh, similar work that the diocesan clergy do, but it's still his sacrifice. It's still all the graces that you need for your salvation. It's just presented differently. And that presentation doesn't speak to what appears to be an increasingly large number of people. It has failed to retain the young people in the parishes, and it's disenfranchised uh, a large percentage of, of priests and laity. So my own personal opinion is the new mass is an experiment that failed, um, and that the Holy Father uh, recognizes that. In fact, um, he made a rather scathing uh, comment in his book, The Spirit of the Liturgy, when he referred to the new mass as a banal, on-the-spot product, and not consonant with authentic liturgical principles. So my whole purpose in illustrating all of these liturgical principles is to show you the, these principles haven't changed. These are still the same principles that are supposed to be underlying the celebration of the New Mass. Unfortunately, uh, the New Mass has kind of taken on a life of its own. It was never envisioned this way. Pope Benedict says the New Mass. Uh, if you go to the website, www.visitthepope.com, there is a, a half-hour segment of Hearth and Home, which I think is an EWTN television show, and it shows the Pope celebrating uh, the Mass that he celebrates privately in his chapel every day. And if you look at that Mass, what you see is you see an altar that looks like this, and the Pope standing at the altar like this, elevating the host and the chalice exactly the same way that the priest elevates the host and chalice during the traditional Mass. But he's saying the new Mass. He's saying it uh, in, in Italian. So he, he is abiding by these principles when he says the new Mass. Unfortunately, and in most parishes, uh, they do not. Why can't we have that? Why can't we have that? Because we haven't been given it yet. Uh, maybe we will have it one day. I, I hope we would have it. I, I think that's the direction that the, that the Pope is, is taking the liturgy, is that's precisely what he wants. He wants the liturgy to go back to these principles. The trouble is, is that if you want to make the new Mass look like this, you got to take so much flack from your bishop and your fellow priests and your laity, you have to justify every single decision that you make. Uh, I mean, Father knows. He, he's been there. Uh, I mean, you, you have to do... Uh, you know, I mean, you're getting called into the chancery almost every day. You're getting persecuted left and right. Uh, if you try to make the new mass look like this, uh, it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's almost an impossible battle if you're a priest in a parish. Uh, but if you want to make the new mass look like this, all you got to do is say the old mass, and then nobody can argue with you. So it's just it's easier to do this if you're a priest in a parish because then nobody can fight with you, nobody can argue, and nobody can tell you that what you're doing is wrong because you've got the backing of the Holy Father. Now, if you want to make the new Mass look like this, then all of a sudden, you've got no authority to fall back on. So maybe, hopefully, uh, I mean, the new translation of the, of, the, um, of, the, um, of the ordinary form, the new English translation that's coming out in Advent of this year, uh, if you look at that translation and you compare it to the English, which is in your traditional uh, missal, the English is very, very similar. Very, very similar. It's a very, very faithful, very accurate translation of the Latin. So it seems that that's precisely the direction that the Pope is taking us. Uh, in the meantime, um, we, we, we do this Mass. That's, that's what we do. And, uh, and we do it for those who uh, prefer the old Mass. And what direction the liturgy will take in the future, uh, we don't know. And it's not our place to, uh, to judge the intentions of the Holy Father. Um, we're not liturgical innovators. We're not liturgical agitators. Uh, what we want is for good liturgy to be celebrated that is uh, uh, faithful and worthy and, and reverent towards Almighty God. And whatever the Holy Father decides to do uh, with the liturgy is uh, entirely his prerogative. Um, and as long as it's, as, as it's good liturgy, we're, we're not going to argue about it. Father, are we bound to attend Novus Ordo if there is no traditional mass at the places that we are? 
on a Sunday? Uh, objectively speaking, objectively speaking, yes. Objectively speaking, yes. Now, subjectively speaking, there are all kinds of considerations uh, that have to be taken uh, into account. If the only local parish that is available to you is celebrating a mass which is um, illicit, either because it's uh, not in communion with the church or it's so badly celebrated and the violation of the rubrics are so grave that it can be hardly called a mass, then uh, no, you're not bound uh, to go to clown masses or to uh, you know, gravely disordered celebrations of holy mass. But if there is a you know, well-celebrated, reverent uh, Novus Ordo mass uh, available, uh, then unless you yourself suffer from some uh, spiritual or uh, psychological uh, difficulty with that, in which case you can get a dispensation from a priest, then objectively considered, you know, yes, it's better to go to Mass than to, than to not go to Mass. So we don't dissuade people from going to the Novus Ordo, um, but we do grant exceptions in, in, in specific cases because not everybody can. Not everybody is capable of going to the Novus Ordo and, I mean, if you go to the Novus Ordo Mass and all you're doing is meditating thoughts of hatred and imagining yourself killing the priest, <laughs> you, know, you probably shouldn't go to the Novus Ordo. You know, it would not be a good idea for you to do that. But, you know, if you're a normal person who can stomach, you know, a, a little bit of nonsense and still keep your faith, then, you know, yes, it's going to go to Mass. And, uh, uh, my father, I had read that uh, the Holy Father wanted the traditional Mass in all the parishes. Yes. Um, and we're not seeing that. Why are we not seeing that? Well, you, you are seeing it, um, but um, it's just not being published. So, I mean, it's happening. Let me put it that way. It's happening. It is happening. In the Diocese of Arlington, Virginia, for instance, half the priests <coughs> in the Diocese of Arlington celebrate the traditional Latin Mass. Uh, on, on some kind of a regular basis, whether that be once a week, once a month, every first Friday, something like that. Half the priests, the Diocese of Arlington. So that's a huge number. And they're actually teaching the, uh, this form of the Mass in the Novus Ordo seminaries. So the, the North American College in Rome ordered over 250 copies of the, of the training video, which the fraternity produced a couple of years ago, uh, to, treat, uh, to train seminarians in Rome how to say this form of the Mass so that the, the seminarians would have the option of saying it. They're doing the same thing in Kenrick Seminary in uh, St. Louis. They're doing the same thing in, uh, up in Minneapolis. I can't remember the name of the seminary there. Um, so it is growing. The younger generation of priests, and they're getting younger. Uh, there's some of them here. Um, they, they're learning the old Mass. And, you know, when they... It's, it's, it's not going to take very long. You know, another 20 years, I think, um, you're going to see... Uh, traditional Latin masses in, in probably half the parishes across the United States on some, on some kind of a basis.